वेलकम बैक चिल्ड्रन विद द रेस्ट पोर्शन ऑफ द मेकिंग ऑफ अ साइंटिस्ट नाउ वी हैव सीन दैट हाउ अ साइंटिस्ट हाउ अ स्मॉल बॉय बिकेम अ साइंटिस्ट हाउ अ स्मॉल बॉय स्टार्टेड विद द कलेक्शन ऑफ बटरफ्लाइज हाउ द इंटरेस्ट चेंजेस फ्रॉम स्लोली एंड स्लोली डिफरेंट प्राइजेज वन बाय हिम मेड हिम मोर इंटरेस्टेड टूअर्ड साइंस टू एक्सप्लोर मोर इन द वर्ल्ड ऑफ अनोन and uh, it started with his mother and slowly and slowly how the boy reached to become a, a, a person of research in the walred red army institute of research to do the research on entomology and we can see that he went on putting uh, feathers in his cap achievements prizes different new thoughts ideas and constant support of dr yukohat directly and indirectly as a high school junior richard a bright continued his advanced experiments on the monarch pupa that year this project won first place at the international science fair and gave him another chance to work in the army laboratory during the summer in his senior year he went a step further he grew cells from a monarch's wing he grew cells from a monarch's wing in a culture and showed that the cells would divide and develop into normal butterfly wing scales only if they were fed the hormone from the gold spots so the um, uh, that the uh, truth hidden behind the gold spots on the wings of the butterflies were revealed to some extent through this experiment that project won first place for zoology at the international fair why not because it gave a new idea that it was not only ornamental it was actually needed for the butterfly for its proper development that project won first place for zoology at the international fair he spent the summer after graduation doing further work at the army laboratory and at the laboratory of the us department of agriculture the following summer after his freshman year at harvard university ebright went back to the laboratory of the department of agriculture and did more work on the hormone from the gold spots so the work continued using the laboratory sophisticated instruments which was very much required for this type of experiments he was able to identify the hormones chemical structure a year and a half later during his junior year ebright got the idea for his new theory about cell life it came while he was looking at x ray photos of the chemical structure of a hormone when he saw these photos ebright did not shout eureka as archimedes did or even i have got it but he believed that along with his findings about insect hormones the photos gave him the answer to one of the biologist puzzles how the cell can read the blueprint of its dna you all know about dna dna is a substance in the nucleus of a cell that controls its hereditary it gives a picture of the hereditary hereditary that is um, how means on the traits that are continued from generation after generation it determines the form and function of the cell thus dna is a blueprint of life that was established through this experiment through his his, uh, his um, work on cells a bright and his college roommate james r wong worked all that night drawing pictures and constructing plastic models how to show how to show that how the models go on what is a structure so they did it with plastic models of molecules to show how it could happen the real idea a person can get by seeing the models of plastic models of the cells together they later wrote the paper that explained the theory surprising no one who knew him richard ebright graduated from harvard with highest honors second in his class of 1510 
Ibright went on to become a graduate student researcher at Harvard Medical School. There he began doing experiments to test his theory. In the theory, if the theory proves correct, it will be a big step towards understanding the process of life. It might also lead to new ideas for preventing some types of cancer and other diseases. All of this is possible because of Ebright's scientific curiosity. His high school research into the purpose of the spots of a monarch pupa eventually led him to his theory about cell life. Now, Richard, Eb Richard Ebright has been interested in science since he first began collecting butterflies. That uh, interest started from there, that is collecting butterflies. That was the beginning of his scientific journey but not so deeply that he hasn't time for other interests. But the most interesting thing is that this man or rather a boy when he was a boy was not only interested in science and butterflies and in books. He was versatile. But not so deeply that he hasn't time for other interests. Interests. Ebright also became a champion debater and public speaker and a good canoeist and all-round outdoor person. Whatever you say, books, there also he was. Whatever you say, outdoor games, outdoor activities, there also he was the pioneer, the best. He is also an expert photographer, particularly of nature and scientific exhibits. In high school, Richard A. Bright was a, a straight a student because learning was easy. He turned a lot of his energy towards a debating and model United Nations clubs. He also found someone to admire Richard A. Well, uh, Weherer, his social studies teacher and advisor to both clubs. Mr. Weherer was the perfect person for me then. He opened my mind to new ideas, A. Bright, uh, a. Bright said. Richard would always give that extra effort, Mr. Behera said. What pleased me was, here was this person who put in three or four hours at night doing debate research besides doing all his research with butterflies and his other interests. So when we put up excuses that we don't get time for doing one thing for the other or I am a bookworm. I like books only and I, that is why I don't have time for other things or I should not give time for other things. Definitely it is an, uh, an answer to them that then how Richard A. Bright could do. How he could be a scientist like this. He did everything. So... You have to know how to manipulate it, how to manipulate your turn, how to calculate your time, how to make utilize of your time. So he used to uh, wake up and uh, win, uh, he uh, invested so much time for his other works also. Richard was competitive, Mr. Weyhurer continued, but not in a bad sense. To become a competitive mind, it is not a bad thing you should be competitive but in a good sense you should not be jealous you should be competitive your competitor should be your good friend and let us together when we go that would be your motto and who would achieve better would uh, who would work more would achieve the better there is no jealousy and no back pulling to your competitor so richard was competitive mr weherer continued but not in a bad sense he explained, Richard wasn't interested in winning for winning's sake or winning to get a prize. Rather, he was winning because he wanted to do the best job he could. For the right reasons, he wants to be the best. He wanted to put his work the best. That achieved him prize. Not for winning, not to show, not to flaunt, not to boast, but to achieve something something the best and that is one of the ingredients in the making of a scientist scientists are there but a proper making proper make of a scientist is 
Richard A. Bright. Start with a first rate mind, add curiosity and mix in the will to win for the right reasons. A Bright has all these qualities. From the time the book The Travels of Monarch X opened the world of science to him, Richard A. Bright has never lost his scientific curiosity. That is important. He never lost his scientific curiosity. And that curiosity always helped him to get ingredients to uh, think more, to achieve more. So children, that is the story of making of a scientist. Definitely that would help you, motivate you to become a scientist like a bride. Open yourself, open your mind, have curiosity, try to know more and this uh, wish or desire to more will lead you to a better scientist or a better person first, then a better scientist for, a, for the future. And I hope that those who are watching my video, uh, many of you will be scientists, uh, my future scientists and definitely you will prepare your journey in this way, one after another achieving, but with a real curiosity of mind and to achieve real thing. Thank you children and uh, read the chapter nicely. Um, try to um, remember the achievements and as I told you that field of facts, you have to become more careful about the facts of the chapter. I will discuss about the question answers later children. In this point, let me tell you that basically now continuously I will go on uploading the videos and uh, after finishing the syllabus, I will come back with the uh, assignment, writing assignment. Then one by one, I will give you writing the assignment. Now you just uh, with your uh, time, comfortable time, you go on watching the videos and let us finish the syllabus first. Then we will do the assignments. Okay, children. Thank you.